Could you perhaps do a demo of DeepStack based on this video? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday, the series where you guys ask the questions and I do my best to answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible. And this week we're taking a look at DeepStack, which is a free and local service for running object detection. And it can even do face detection and recognition as well. I'll show you how to install it on Docker, how to add it to your home assistant configuration, and finally how to run your first detection. Fun little story about this, I was actually talking to Dr. Z's just recently and he asked me if I could help him build an object detection that would recognize when there were dishes in the sink so that he could turn off his kids internet until they did the dishes and I mean when you get a message like that how can you realistically refuse and so since then I've been buried in documentation for creating my own custom models on DeepStack and TensorFlow in order to make that happen and perhaps we'll cover that in a future video if you guys are interested but for now we need to cover the basics and that's what we are doing today very quickly before we get into the guide if you like this video make sure to drop it a like and hit the subscribe button and i will very much appreciate it and if you want your question answered in the next tech tutorial tuesday make sure to drop it in the comments down below and you never know i might just answer it so let's talk about what DeepStack is DeepStack is an ai server that provides object detection scene detection and even face detection and and recognition. It runs locally on your own hardware and is completely offline, no cloud required. It exposes a REST API, meaning you can easily integrate it with a wide variety of platforms. And finally, it's free, at least for us home users. At the time of filming, DeepStack has support for 80 common objects. And as mentioned, you can also train your own objects and you can even train your own faces. I made a video a while back about using dudes for object detection, and that's actually where this question came from. And so I think it's important to recognize the difference between dudes and DeepStack. So Dudes is a REST API for TensorFlow and DeepStack is a REST API for, well, DeepStack. So it's two completely different technologies. The main difference for you guys as the user is specifically related to Home Assistant and that's that Dudes runs continuously on a camera so it's always detecting whereas DeepStack runs on demand, so it's triggered by a service such as Motion. Let's very quickly talk about the hardware requirements that you're gonna need for running your own DeepStack server because there are a number of ways to run it. DeepStack actually just released an optimized version for the NVIDIA Jetson line of products, and I actually checked out the cheapest board which you can check out up here, and the nice thing about that Jetson board is that it's available for just 54 pounds or 59 US dollars, and it gets you much higher performance than say a Raspberry Pi does. The reason the Jetson boards are so good is because of their inbuilt GPUs. GPUs perform much better on certain tasks like object detection than even the most powerful CPU does. And because I know some of you are going to ask, this does not run on the Raspberry Pi yet unfortunately. Although between you and me, I've heard it's coming soon. You can also run this on normal x86 hardware, although be aware that the requirements are a little high. An i5 and 8GB of RAM is the minimum recommended. And I have actually ran it on less than this, but I don't know what is the minimum you can get away with, so just something to be aware of. Finally, there are two things you will need specifically for this video. And the first one is a machine with Docker already installed. I'm not gonna cover the Docker install in this video because there are a ton of OS's out there and varying instructions for each OS. And so I'll link the official Docker install instructions in the um, description down below. Um, and to be honest, they do a better job than I could. The second one is optional, but you'll need Home Assistant installed with a camera entity already integrated. If you don't want to use Home Assistant, then you can just stop watching when we get to the Home Assistant portion. Because it's a REST API, that means you can integrate it with whatever you want. First things first, you're gonna to need to have terminal or command line access to your Docker server. From there, you're gonna run the following Docker command if you're running on normal x86 hardware, which is gonna pull down the latest DeepStack image. And if you're running on NVIDIA Jets and Nano, you're gonna to need to change the command slightly to look like this. The dash E vision detection equals true is important as that's what's actually gonna start up the object detection portion of DeepStack. If you want to run the face detection, then change it to face vision equals true. We're gonna be focusing on the object detection portion in this video. However, if you want to see some face detection, then let me know in the comments down below. Once you run this, Docker is now gonna start pulling down all the required components to run the image. 
This will take a few minutes depending on your internet speed. Once done, it will start up and you should have something that looks like this on your terminal. That is essentially all you need to do to get DeepStack installed, although we are going to come back to this terminal later on so make sure to leave it open. Then you're going to head into Home Assistant and then open up Hacks and we're going to install a component or an integration from Hacks. If you don't have Hacks then make sure to check out this video up here. Inside Hacks, open the Custom Integrations menu and search for DeepStack and install the DeepStack Object Custom Integration. This is an excellent integration made by Robin Cole and I'll have his excellent GitHub repo linked in the description down below. After you've installed the integration and restarted Home Assistant, head into your configuration and then we're going to add the following lines. The key ones to watch out for here are to obviously set your IP address to the IP address of your DeepStack server. Just a note that you can actually run the DeepStack server on your Home Assistant server as long as the uh, hardware is up to the requirements. You'll also want to set the port to port 80 which is the default port although you can change it if you want to. Next you can change the save file folder and the always save latest JPEG options to control how the images are saved. And then in the targets box, you'll want to set the targets you actually want to find in your images, such as person or vehicle, and also set your confidence level, which is a percentage of how sure DeepStack is on a detection. If you want to see a full list of the targets available, make sure to check out Robin's GitHub linked in the description. He has a list of all the objects that you can detect. The final option is to set the source, which is the camera entity that you want to run detections on. Once done, you can save, check your config, and then restart Home Assistant. Once restarted, head into DevTools and then States, and you'll now have an image processing sensor, which will have an unknown state, which is fine. Head over to Services, and then you'll want to run the image processing.scan service, and then enter your entity ID in the box. This will trigger your first detection. Remember we discussed earlier that DeepStack is run on demand rather than running continuously. Once you've triggered the service, open back up your terminal and you should see a new line in the terminal. This tells you that an image has been processed and you'll get a new line here for each image that you scan. Something to note here is that it's not uncommon, at least in my experience, for the first detection to take much longer to run than any of the others. For example, my first detection would all sometimes take like 20 or 30 seconds and then anything after that would take maybe three or 400 milliseconds. So don't panic if your first line doesn't show up immediately. If we head back to Dev Tools and States and find the image processing sensor again, you'll see that this time around the sensor is populated fully and if you detected something in the image then you will have the detections found in the attributes. From there we are pretty much done except we need to do a little bit of a cleanup on the docker container. Head back to your terminal and then hit Control c This will stop the container since we are running in an interactive mode so to speak. Next type docker container ls-a which will produce a list of all of our containers. And if this is the first image you've started, then you will only have one entry here. If you're running this on Home Assistant OS or something else, then you may have quite a few. Find the line that has the deep stack image on it, and you'll want to either copy the container name or the container ID. Then we are going to start our container again using the sudo docker start command with your container ID or name. Then we are going to update our container so that it starts automatically on boot. So issue the following docker update command to set that flag. Finally, use the docker container ls command again and check your container is up and running. And that's pretty much it. It's a relatively straightforward process. From there, you're going to want to create an automation that scans your images. And the best way to do that is if your camera supports the motion flag within Home Assistant. Then you can create an automation that triggers the image processing.scan service every time motion is detected. If your camera doesn't support motion detection, then you can trigger it via just every 30 seconds or however often you want, then run a automation. It's a bit more simple, but it does work. If you want a full rundown on how to take the images outputted from DeepStack and integrate them into your actionable notifications, make sure to check out my Android and iOS actionable notifications video where we go into everything in great detail. You can also add the images outputted from DeepStack into a card on your dashboard. 
But there we go, that is pretty much all the time we have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know, are you planning on implementing this in your setup and where do you plan on using it? I'm very interested as always. Make sure to leave your questions for the next Tech Tutorial Tuesday in the comments down below. Make sure to give it a like and get subscribed if you aren't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Pew.